This is the future. So, it's finally official that Uviri Paradox is the next big update for Warframe this year and, it will have a big reveal on Tenecon 2022. Speaking of Tenecon 2022, Digital Extremes allowed us to give away a Tenecon 2022 digital pack which includes the following prizes. The coolest part from this giveaway is the Operator and Drifter cosmetics which I'm currently rocking. If you want to get your hands on a free Tenecon 2022 pack, then check out the link I have provided in the pinned comment below. Simply click it and follow the instruction to get a chance to win all these stuff from the Tenecon 2022 pack. Okay, there are lots of important things to cover in this video so, let's move into the main topic, and that is the best dagger in Warframe right now. Finally, Echoes of Zaruman brought the new evolving dagger called Inadim. This new evolving dagger's blueprint is purchased from Cavalero of the Holdfasts at rank 0, neutral for 5500 standing. The blueprint can be traded by the way. After acquiring the main blueprint, head to your foundry to build the weapon. It will require void plume pinions and quills to do so, and I bet that you have enough of these materials already after seeing my Echoes of Zaruman preparation video. After that, it's time to evolve the weapon. When newly acquired from the foundry, players must acquire 100 kills with the inner dem to gain access to its incarnate transformation, which is its first evolution. You can do this by simply going into low level missions and killing enemies until you have completed the task, or you can go into the elite sanctuary onslaught to complete the evolution requirement, and at the same time, rank up the weapon. Every evolution, you need to go to Cavalero to pick a perk. I just hope that in the future, Digital Extremes will have a feature wherein we can pick a perk once we unlock all evolutions of the weapon. The same goes for other evolving weapons. The second evolution requirement will task you to activate and can inform six times in one mission. It's a pretty simple task, and what I did is just do it on Elite Sanctuary Onslaught with my Vorban. I mean, there's no need to former this weapon by the way, as I think at zero former, it's both a decent weapon in terms of damage, and usefulness. What I did is I have ranked up both evolving shotgun and the inner demon elite sanctuary onslaught. I both finished the first and second evolutions of both evolving weapons using my Vorban. By the way, I'm not saying that you do like what I did. I'm just saying how I did it so, it's up to you if you will do the same or not. The third evolution requires you to do three heavy attacks on Thrax Centurions or Legates. Again, I finished this mission along with the evolution requirement of the evolving shotgun since the shotgun requires you do headshots without reloading against Void Angels. It's like hitting two birds with one stone. The next evolution is closing 12 Void Flood and, this is the same with the evolving shotgun. What I did is do a Void Flood bounty mission with Titania since it's a complete cheese using your Warframe, you can do the normal Void Flood mission so you can just continue until 12 ruptures, and it's just my personal preference to do the bounty variant of the Void Flood because of the rewards. Lastly, the 5th evolution requires you to use 3 Incarnan weapons and finish a level 30 mission solo. I just did an Exterminate Zariman bounty mission, and equip all 3 Incarnan weapons on my Mesa, including the Letum. After that, it's time to try out the evolving weapons, beginning with the dagger. So, instead of discussing the perks one by one, I will just tell how good a perk is, based on my experience modding the weapon. Actually, there are two variants that I will discuss in this video regarding the new inner dem evolving dagger. In the title, I said that this is the best dagger in the game right now at zero former, not just because it can kill high level enemies, but it's also useful to specific setups because of its incarnate buffs. There are two gimmicks that you should know about this evolving dagger. Upon reaching 5 times combo, and then performing a heavy attack, you will activate its incarnate form that increases the weapon's range by 3 meters, increases its attack speed, causes aerial attacks to release a projectile, and finisher attacks grant the Incarnan Resilience buff. The Aerial Projectile deals 360 radiation damage, and it's affected by the mods you added in the weapon, including those Acolyte mods like Blood, Rush and Weeping Wounds. However, the projectile can't build up combo counter and, if you are just like me who wants that boost of critical chance, status chance, and damage from the combo counter, then you will need to use the normal attack of the evolving dagger, and give it some combo duration. Or might as well add the Naraman in your setup just to keep the buff of 12x combo multiplier. 
However, don't be troubled by this, as honestly, the aerial attack of the dagger is less powerful compared to the normal hack and slash of the inner dim, you will deal more damage with the normal attack, compared to aim gliding and throwing some projectiles with this weapon, I'm not saying it's weak, it's just that normal hack and slash for me have slightly better damage than the aerial projectile of this weapon using the same mod setup. Another gimmick that this weapon gives is the Incarnan Resilience buff that gives plus 10% damage resistance per stack, stacking up to 4 times. Although the stacks are multiplicative, it's still great for those tank warframes, and in my opinion, I think this dagger is built towards the next prime warframe which is Baroque Prime. I'm just kidding and don't be mad at me. So anyway, I think this is the best stat stick for Brook, or even other Warframes that needs a boost in red crit and damage resistance. We will discuss that later, but for now, let me give you the first build, which is the normal in a dem version that can do aerial attacks, normal, and even a combination of fast and heavy attacks. So let's discuss first the evolutions I picked for this build. Evolutions 1 is given, and there's nothing else to discuss since this is always standard in Karnan mode. For evolutions 2, I choose to have attack speed bonus for this build simply because the other bonuses are not that great. The range would be nice, but the bonus is mediocre, and I don't want any sprint speed in my build unless I'm running a max speed vault of max speed gauss. For evolution 3, I would love to go with the hawk momentum, but it's just 5 combo and not the multiplier. If it will give 5 times multiplier per 10 meter continuous slide, then I would choose it over the other perks since it's more useful. However, it would take a couple of slides before you can even get to max combo count, and it's just better to hit enemies than just sliding like a dum dum dot so, it's either Skyborn Hunter or Blade Twister. In my case, Blade Twister is more suitable for my playstyle since you can actually make good use of the damage resistance coming from Incarnan Resilience and, plus finisher attack bonus will help proc the buff reliably. For the fourth evolution, it's a no-brainer and I choose Swooping Lunch for this build. Once you have killed three enemies using the aerial attack of this dagger, you gain 150% melee damage, and this also works in your normal hack and slash combo which is quite amazing as a damage boosting feature for this weapon. And last but not least, for the fifth evolution, I choose to have armed inspiration. This may seem unreliable at first glance, but there's a trick to make this perk very reliable in terms of acquiring combo count, and maintaining it for the whole duration of the mission. The trick is simple, use any secondary weapon and then, equip it with both pistol ammo mutation mod, and the eject magazine mod, to gain combo using this perk, simply spend some ammunition on your pistol and after that, use the inner dem to holster your pistol and proc the feature of eject magazine, this is the fastest, and most reliable way of gaining combo with an evolving weapon, why did I choose it over the other perk though? Stunning Brutality is theoretically good, and I even tested it for some leveling runs. The idea was so that I can keep the enemies unalerted and proc the 500% affinity stealth multiplier so I can level up faster. But the problem is, the 10 meters radius is mediocre, and there are better ways to keep that 500% stealth affinity boost. Even as utility, or a form of survivability through crowd control, I just hate that it's only 10 meters radius. Now, there is an instance wherein you would want to try the blood anointed perk. You can actually get 100% heavy attack efficiency with this perk when you pair it with reflex coil. However, this doesn't mean that it will not deplete your combo counter. It will still deplete it per heavy attack but, it would be lesser. Say, the first time you do a heavy attack, it will not deplete any combo count, and then it will go down to 11 times at the second heavy attack. The only problem is, that you will need to proc the perk first, and it requires doing a finisher first. While it's great that it does not proc on finisher kill, still, you would need something to open up enemies to a finisher. If that's not what you want, then I highly suggest the armed inspiration perk for this evolving dagger. Now, this is the build when you want to try out the blood anointed perk. If you don't need it, then simply swap this mod for an attack speed mod. Another downside of Blood Anointed build is that you would need to have an attack speed arcane in your Warframe slot if you value fast attack speed. With this build, you can bust enemies with either fast, heavy, or even the aerial projectiles of this weapon. For the combo duration, I just use both primary and secondary dexterity arcane on my weapons to get 15 seconds of combo duration. Anyway, it's very fast to acquire combo if you are using the Armed Inspiration perk. 
coupled with eject magazine and pistol ammo mutation mod. The best part is, that you can actually use something like the Kuvanuka, not just as a utility for this setup, but also as a primer gun for a condition overload build in your inner dim. Now, let's discuss this weapon as a good stat stick. For this video, we will take Baruch as an example. I have discussed this with the Tunf Evolving Weapon in the past but, I think Inadem is way better as a stat stick as it doesn't just provide red crit on Baruch by maintaining the combo count for the Gladiator mods, but it also adds extra damage resistance because of the Incarnan Resilience buff. And mind you, Baruch's lull ability can open enemies to finisher, which makes it easy to proc the Incarnan Resilience buff. For the stat stick, it got the same evolution except for the fourth one, since I choose to have Incarnan Imago for this one so I can easily achieve the Incarnan mode of this evolving dagger. Incarnan mode for melee has a fixed duration, and during those times, the Incarnan resilience buff will stay as long as you already procured it. Now, for the stat stick build for Brook, here are the mods I have chosen. Of course, Gladiator mods for that sweet red crit at 12 times combo multiplier, and then some damage and finisher damage so I can proc Incarnan Resilience easily. Take note that Incarnan Resilience will only proc when you use Inadem, and not when you are using Brook's Desert Wind. The only perk that procs, while Brook is in Desert Wind, is the fifth evolution we picked named Armed Inspiration. The same goes to those perks that adds combo count on slide or finisher. They don't proc when you are in Desert Wind. That is why in terms of evolution, for a stat stick build, I only choose those who will only work while Baruch's Desert Wind is active. I got the same evolution for the second one, while for the third evolution, I choose Blade Twister so I can deal more finisher damage and help me proc Incarnan Resilience easy. For the fourth evolution, I choose Incarnan Imago, since this is the only one that will work for the stat stick build. Again, the melee bonus doesn't work for Baruch as the Warframe can't land aerial attacks. And to proc this perk, you must use the inner dim, while protracted execution doesn't work also while Baruch's desert wind is active. The last evolution is self-explanatory, and I advise you to try this one for yourself. In case you are wondering about my Baruch build, it's the most basic high power strength build with pillage. And lastly, here's the desert wind build in case you need it. So that's it. If someone told you that inner dim is a mastery rank fodder weapon, then let them see this video. I just don't understand players sometimes after trying it in just a couple of minutes, and they don't see an item doing massive damage, they just consider it as a mastery rank fodder. If it doesn't work in a normal setup, probably it has a hidden synergy between Warframes and other weapons that you should try to experiment with and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off.